Welcome back. It's time to check in with Bob Bull, sold over a wax to see what's happened in the crop and agriculture world. Good morning, Bob. Good morning. Have you guys got a lot of pictures of buck, deer? I haven't seen much on Facebook or anything about the kill. I don't know if it's up, down, what it is. Well, we had a story on yesterday morning okay. of uh, our st uh, one of our reporters, Michelle, got a something with a with twelve point buck. Mm -hmm. Good for but, her! Yeah. Wow. Well, no, she didn't get it. It was a story that she did of oh, a gentleman oh, oh, oh. down by uh, Oliva, I believe, mm -hmm. that had a twelve pointer. So. Yeah, but usually you get over in Buffalo County and plays. I mean, they're getting fourteen, sixteen pointers, mm -hmm. and I haven't seen many big big bucks in the pictures yet. So maybe it's going to be a late harvest. We'll see. Maybe. But I don't have any yet either. So <laughs> of course you got to go in the woods to get one too. <laughs> yeah, very That's true. Right. <laughs> that has effect on the on huh. the results too. <laughs> Well, let's take a look at what's going on this morning. The 2018 Farm Bill, which originally expired on October 1st, has been extended. Late last week, Congress passed another short-term funding bill that included a nearly one-year extension of the 2018 Farm Bill. Senate and House Agriculture Committee leaders all agreed with extending the Farm Bill through September of next year. President Biden is expected to sign that law when it finally comes out of the Congress. Well, the USDA plans on using $1.3 billion for the commodity, from the Commodity Credit Corporation to launch a new export market development program called the Regional Agricultural Promotion Program, or RAP. Even with last year's record exports of food and agricultural products to the tune of $196 billion, the USDA is making this investment to expand markets even more. Strong competition, particularly from uh, South America, Brazil, and Ar Argentina, and to strengthen the U.S. dollar are two reasons in investing in expanding markets around the world. And the current agricultural trade promotion program is set to run out next year. Studies have found that for every $1 of investment in opening up new markets, a $24 return in increased food and agricultural exports is realized for this country's farmers. Well, last week, avian influenza, better known as bird flu, was confirmed in a backyard flock in Taylor County. This is Wisconsin's first confirmed case of the uh, problem in a domestic flock in 2023. Now, Iowa, Michigan, Minnesota have all announced cases of bird flu in domestic flocks in the past month as well, and the USDA has confirmed outbreaks in 67 flocks across 20 states in just the past 30 days. Bird flu is very contagious, often fatal to domestic poultry, and flock owners are being encouraged to practice strong biosecurity measures, even in those backyard flocks, to help prevent the birds from getting that virus. Well, Wisconsin Farm Bureau's Pro Promotion and Education Committee has appointed Ashley Schlender of Jefferson County and Heidi Slinkman of Wood County to the organization's board of directors. Schlender and her family own and operate a robotic dairy farm as well as a custom chopping business in the Watertown area. Slinkman has served as the business manager for her family farm, the Gaynor Cranberry Company, in Wisconsin Rapids for the past 17 years. Brenda Doyash from Eau Claire County and Steve Mueller from St. Croix County were reappointed to serve second terms on the committee. Now, those terms begin at the end of the Farm Bureau's annual convention and meeting and their Young Farmer and Agriculturals Conference as well. That's December 1st through the 4th in Wisconsin Rapids. Let's go to the market board where prices for corn and beans were higher yesterday, kind of a quiet trade. They have an eye on South American weather right now. And overnight, not a lot of movement. We'll look at all March contracts here this morning. March corn up a penny at 489. The wheat also up a penny overnight. And the soybeans up a nickel, sitting at 1388. Dairy markets continue to struggle. At barrel cheese price, $1.51 a pound down a nickel. Blocks unchanged. Butter was the only up arrow. That was up two and three quarters cents to 251 and three quarters. Class three futures, November was unchanged at 1713. December down 26, uh, also down 26 was that January price at 1653. Prices were lower out through July. So again, we've still got uh, more corn to come off, and hunters are out in the woods, so let's everybody be careful. Mm -hmm. Remember, the combines are green or red, the deer are probably going to be brown. So <laughs> just in case you're wondering. Well, I'm, on a lot of my bus routes, I see the combines all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, uh, they're huge. Yeah. And <laughs> you can see a lot of dust flying, too. Oh, that I, is right. I it's heard been Mike so dry. Say, yeah, I heard Mike say the low of the uh, driest November on record. Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. be careful. All right, have a good one, you guys. See you, Bob. you too.